morning. morning. If you would take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to look at one verse today. And that verse is verse 25. But I want to welcome you all here again this morning. And ask that you continue to be in prayer for Miss Mary Lane as well, who had surgery this past week. And there's a number of people, Miss Sarah and others that need our prayers, just continue to pray for them, and I know that you will. Today we're going to talk about why should I go to church? Why should you go to church? Why should any of us go to church? <laughs> and there's a reason why we should go. There's a number of reasons why we should go. It's important. And I'm here today, I see some uh, unfamiliar faces, people visiting with us. Good to have you with us this morning. Welcome to make yourself at home. I see my, my daughter's out there, so she better watch out because you never know why I might slip out of my mouth. I'm just throwing that out there to you. So, uh, all right, as we look into our passage this morning, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, not forsaking, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you this morning and we open up your word. I pray you'll speak to our hearts. I pray, Lord, that we would open our ears and our minds and our hearts and be receptive to what you have for us. Help us to apply it in our lives. And I pray for those that are not here this morning, that are maybe listening or seeing this message over the internet, or Facebook, whatever it might be. I pray you'll use it to speak to their hearts. And my prayer is this, Lord, that if there's one person here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray today they would get that matter settled and they would have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. For it's in his name we do pray. Amen. So why should we go to church? This is probably an area where most Christians at some time or another struggle. Now if you've been here in church any length of time, you probably got that settled. You say, I don't know, that, that shouldn't even be a struggle. It shouldn't be a question. But why is it we don't see the pews packed? Because people still struggle with this idea of, why should I go to church? It's not that we don't have good excuses or good reasons, okay? <clears throat> There's always people that have reasons. Some people have to work. Well, that's understandable. Jesse's training to be a doctor. At some point, at some time, he's going to miss a Sunday or a Wednesday because he has to be on call. I used to have to work rotating shift work. I worked for the military. So there were times I could not be here. We have people in the military who can't be here. There are people who work for the police department or fire department or in the hospitals. These are vital things that we have to take care of. The world doesn't shut down because we have church. And there are certain things we need. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have a desire to be in church, it just means that your job may prevent you from being in church. And there's, I know people get sick. We have a number of people that aren't with us today because they're sick. And that's understandable. Nobody wants you to come in here if you're feeling horrible. If you're coughing and sneezing and doing all that, don't come in here and get everybody else sick too. We're not asking you to do that. Okay? We're not asking you to come in here with a, a fever about to pass out so you can show how spiritual you are. You understand that, right? right. Well, we all understand that. Now, I've had one time somebody, I used to work, like I said, rotating shift work. I came in here after working mid shift, which is 11 o'clock at night till 7 o'clock in the morning. It was a Saturday, I got up about 6 p.m. So I basically been up from 6 p.m. until now. We were having a Sunday school meeting before Sunday school. It was about 8.45 when we had the meeting. And one of the people that had been in there, 
He wasn't here the week before. And the person who was leading the meeting, the Sunday school superintendent, who said, well, how come you weren't here last week? Well, I, you know, I had to get some sleep because I worked the night before and blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, Tom worked last night and he's here. I said, don't compare me. That's not what we're here, okay? You don't compare me to somebody else and try to guilt them. That's not the purpose, okay? That's not how you do it. The question is, why should I go to church? Why should you go to church? We miss church. We come up with every excuse in the world. And here's the thing. Satan wants you to miss church. You understand that? He doesn't want you here this morning. So you ever notice how good you can feel Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday? But on Wednesday afternoon, when it gets closer to Wednesday evening service, boy, you're tired. <laughs> Your head hurts. You just don't feel good. Had a long day. Sunday morning, you wake up, and oh, you don't feel good. Your stomach hurts. I just need to go back and lay down. I think I'm coming down. Do you ever notice that you always get sick on Sundays? Come on, that's right. Or you maybe make it Sunday morning, but you know you're not feeling good Sunday afternoon, right? That's right? So we all go through those things. We all deal with it, whether we want to admit it or not. Because again, we don't want to come across as being unspiritual. My goodness. Somebody, I'm at church and somebody might say, well, look at what he did or what they said. They're not spiritual. We're worried how people are going to judge us, right? I don't care what y'all think about me. All I hear is about God thinks about me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to disappoint you, but ultimately it's God's opinion that matters, not yours. Amen. I respect your opinion. I will listen to you and your counsel. But I don't answer to you. In a very real sense, I do, but I don't. I really answer to God. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Maybe you don't. You say, well, he's, okay. Bear with me. We'll get to it, okay? Don't shake your head at me. I got stories on you, all right? <laughs> so what's a good reason to be in church? Well, one good reason to be in church is when we come together as God's people. Guess who's here? Jesus. Right. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So guess who's here with us this morning, ladies and gentlemen? God. The Lord Jesus Christ. Right. God. Now understand, Jesus is everywhere. So even when you're by yourself, he's with you. The Holy Spirit lives within us, and we know that he's with us. But he says that a special presence is, can be felt when we come together as two or three together in his name. So we gather here this morning in the presence of Jesus. I think sometimes we forget we're going to be in Jesus' presence when we come to church. That's why we don't take it so seriously. We don't. Do you really want to miss out on the opportunity to be with Jesus and his presence? I don't. I don't want to miss out what God has for me today. That's why it's important that we are in church. And I know people would say, well, we need to come together to worship. And yet the counterman to that, people will retort and say, we can worship anywhere. I don't have to be in a physical building to, to worship God. And that's true. You don't. You can worship God anywhere. You can worship God driving down the street. You can worship God at the, in the workplace. You can worship God at your house. But there's something special about worshiping God here that's right. in his house. Did you get that? It's his house surrounded by his Children, Amen. there's something special about that, and we want to, we should want to come and worship together, united. And I know you don't have to physically be in the church to worship, but we should. And you know what happens when we try to worship outside the church? 
We get distracted, don't we? Have you ever been at home? You say, well, I'm just going to open up my Bible and I'm just going to have a little worship service right here. Phone rings. Cats barking. Dogs meowing. Whatever it might be. Kids running all over the place. Something happens and you get distracted. And then you lose your focus and you're not worshiping. Or the TV comes on, you know. Well, we've got five minutes to worship before Dallas comes on. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> I know Dallas is no longer even on TV, but we got five minutes before keeping up with the Kardashians or something. We'll put it, we'll put it more. But that's what we do. It's like with my skit, my child, who's here with me, and I'm going to tell a little story on her. You knew it was coming. She was homeschooled for a while. But she would get distracted because she'd see her sisters playing, watching television. She was supposed to be doing schoolwork, and she didn't want to. She needed the structure of being in a schoolroom, surrounded by other people learning without those distractions. She went to school, and she did very, very well. But she didn't do so good at home. Schools, she could have had her school done, work done in about 15, 20 minutes, 10 hours and counting. I think she still owes me work from the kindergarten that she hasn't completed yet. <laughs> but she didn't want to do it. That's what happens when we get outside the church, around, not around God's people. We get distracted. And Satan will do everything he can. You know, we have a hard enough time being here and having to deal with Satan's distractions. You know how many times I've been sitting here having service and all of a sudden a bug comes through? And somebody starts to, you, you see all this? And they start paying attention to the bug instead of listening to the pastor. Or a baby starts crying when the pastor's starting to make a point. People should be here. Or there's some other thing goes on. Some noise or anything happens. Light goes out. And you wonder why those things happen. Satan trying to get you diverted from your focus on Jesus. So it's real easy. So why should I go to church? Because it's important. I'm surrounded by God's people in his presence. But I want to give you three, three reasons this morning. And before I get to those reasons, I want to say, you know what? We've gotten this idea that church has become take it or leave it. And we've gotten the idea... And it's sad to say, we've gotten the idea that people just aren't going to be here. Did you expect to see the pews full when you came in here today? All the seats filled? Or did you expect kind of what you're seeing right now? And the reason I say that is because, you know what? When people are missing from the church that should be in the church or could be in the church, we've just gotten to where we've accepted it. Yeah, it's just a fact of life. We shouldn't accept it. We shouldn't be okay with it. Now again, I'm not attacking anybody, but what I'm trying to get you to point is we should be doing everything yet we can to encourage them to be here. But yeah, that's just the way life is. But there are three reasons that we have in this passage today that we need to be in church, why you need to be in church, why I need to be in church. And the first thing I want to show you is this. We need to be in church because, number one, God commands it. Now, I know you all know this, but he says here, in verse 25, <laughs> not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. He says, not forsaking. The word not there means in no wise. God forbid. That's a pretty strong language for a three-letter word. But that's what it means. God forbid that you should forsake or leave behind desert coming together, assembling together as Christians. That's what it means by coming together. Assembling together as Christians, 
said, it shouldn't be so. We need to be here. Why? Because God commands it. And then he goes on to say, as the manner of some is. That word manner means the custom. Some people have the custom of not being faithful. So don't be those people. God forbid that you should be those people that are unfaithful to the house of God. We need to make God's house a priority in our lives. If it's not, why should we be a priority in God's life? And think about this. The writer here is not making a suggestion. He's not saying, hey, that'd be a good idea if you went to church. He's saying, it's a commandment. Do it. And when God commands you and God commands I, as believers, you understand, God's speaking to the church here. He's not speaking to the lost. He's speaking to the church. But as believers, when we are told to do something, you don't get an option. God says, do it, you do it. Now we're doing a study on Jonah in Sunday school. And God told Jonah to do something he really, really didn't want to do. And that was to go and preach to the enemy, repentance. So what are you saying? I'm not going to do it. <coughs> God gave me this, this is my word, you go preach repentance to the Ninevites. He didn't like it. He liked what God's word had to say. So a lot of times we look at God's word and we get this golden corral Christianity going. Now if you don't know what I mean by that, it's just we think we can pick and choose what God's word says, what we like and what we don't like. That's called buffet theology. All right? You go to the buffet, you don't like broccoli, you don't have to get broccoli. If you're like me, you like meat and taters, you get all the meat and taters you want. You can keep the green stuff. And don't put no green stuff on my potatoes. They call it chives or something. No, no, get, the, get that off there. I don't want any of that. But we think we can pick and choose God's word that way. Well, I like the salvation part, but I don't like the tithing part. I like the blessing part, but I don't like having to go to church part. You get the idea. You don't get to pick and choose. <coughs> if God says, do it, you do it. If God says, don't do it, you don't do it. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do the things that I say? Why do we claim that he's our Lord and Savior, our Master, when we don't obey him? If we love him, we'll do what he says. You know why? He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So first and foremost, the major reason why we should be in church is because he said to go. Right. He commands us to be here. <clears throat> now, how many people... Here, you don't have to raise your hand. How many people here were in the military? When you were given an order, whether you liked it or not, you did it, right? You had to obey. If not, there were consequences. You get written up. In the Navy, we had what they call captain's mast. And you would get penalized for not obeying. And yet when God tells us to, and he is in charge of all, to do something, we say, well, we don't have to do it. God will let it slide. Really? Really? God said to be here. And please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. All those members of Gospelite Baptist Church that could be here today, that aren't here today, that don't have a legitimate 
excuse for not being here today will answer to God. And you can say, well, that's being harsh and mean. No, that's being honest. You're not going to answer to me. You're going to answer to God. Why? Because I didn't tell you you have to be in church. God did. That's right. And you can like it or not like it. But when God says it, it's settled. And anything else is disobedience. So the first reason we should be in church is because God commands it. The second reason is this. For the support that we need during the battles. The support we need during the battles. You're here today, I'm here today, we are on a journey. The Christian life is a journey. And it's a series of battles that we're going to face. You may not be going through one right now. Or you might. But if you're not going through one right now, you're going to be going through one in the days ahead. And if you try to go through that battle as a lone ranger, guess what? You're going to be overwhelmed, overtaken, and outmatched. Because Satan is not only a formidable foe, he is a powerful foe. Greater than you are, but he's not greater than God. But you know one of the things, when we have God with us, we say, well, I'm not alone. When we are not. But God gives us the weapons that we need. He gives us the armor that we need to stand in the days when we're facing the wiles of the devil. To stand on them. He gives us in Ephesians chapter 6. We can read it. But there's another tool that the Lord gives us, another weapon, and that's our church family. We have one another to support and lift each other up and continue to help us to go on. In the face of the battle, there is strength in numbers. And God wants us to come together and to face these battles head on. And when we choose not to be in church, you know what we're doing? We're saying, God, you've given me this tool, you've given me this weapon, but I'm choosing not to use it. I'll go it alone. You know what that's trying to do? That's trying to like eat a bowl of soup. You get a bowl of soup at a restaurant and they bring you a knife, a fork, and a spoon. And the waiter gives them to you. And you sit there and you say, okay, I'm going to eat this bowl of soup with a fork. And you're shoveling that soup in with a fork and this drum. Now you might get it eaten, but the struggle is going to be hard, isn't it? It's going to take a while. And it's going to be difficult. But if you just used the spoon that they gave you, it would have been so much easier, wouldn't it? Think of yourself, church, as a spoon. And that world out there is soup. God uses us to be there to help people face the battles and to get through them. It doesn't mean they're going to be easy. It doesn't mean they're going to be Oh, no big deal. But it makes it less difficult. <clears throat> and we need our church family when we are facing those battles. And believe me, the people in this church have been facing some battles lately. We can go up and down the list. This message is very personal for me because the Lord gave me this to me a couple of weeks ago when I was in the very midst of the battle. A battle I'm still going through, and you know what I'm talking about. But my church family rallied around me, has been here to support me in ways I can't even begin to tell you, and I can't thank you enough for it. And it's helped me, because you understand there are certain battles that you go through that you know they're coming. They're expected. You know you're going to be facing them. And you can better prepare for those. But sometimes you get blindsided, don't you? You get ambushed. And they come out of nowhere. In the past month, I've been ambushed time and time again. My family's been ambushed time and time again. 
We've been attacked on all sides. And there's things you know about, and there's things you don't know about. And I can tell you this, it's been hard. It's been difficult. But when I'm feeling down or low, all I have to do is go around and see the people in this church. People have lifted me up and said, come on, let's keep going. You're not done. We've got a battle to go. They've stood beside me in the battle. That's what a church family does. That's how important a church family is. That's why you need to be in church, around your church family for that support, that help. And I can say, as I told my daughter this the other night, we were talking about some things that, I said, you know what? We have been ambushed. And I've been battered. And I've been beaten. But I'm not broken. And I may be bruised and I may be wounded, but praise God, I'm not defeated. And you have a part in that. God has been with me. I've had his word. I've had the ability to pray and talk to God. But I've had a church family praying for me, being there, supporting me, encouraging me. How do you get through these things, these battles? When you get, I don't want anything to do with the church, the church family. But it doesn't stop with your battles. See, a lot of times what happens is when we go through the battle, we go running to the church for help. Oh, well, help me get through the battle. Then once the battle's over, we're gone. We disappear. But you know what? There are other people in church that are going through battles that need your help and support as well. And when you forsake the assembling of yourselves together, what you're doing is you're letting them down in the midst of the battle. It's kind of like leaving our allies and our citizens behind in Afghanistan. It's disgraceful. And we, as a church, shouldn't just sit back and accept it. What we need? Call people. I'm not saying give them a hard time. Call them and encourage them to be here. Say you missed them. We used to have a lady in this church, Miss Lily Anton. This lady was one of the sweetest women you ever met in your life. And if you haven't been in church in a while, she'd call you up. Hey, didn't see you in church. Where you at? She did that to me one time. I said, Miss Lily, I had to work. Really? What time? Miss Lily, I work from 3 in the afternoon to 11 at night. Oh, okay. <laughs> when are you going to be back in church? I'll be there Sunday morning, Miss Lily, I promise. And Miss Lily wanted to be in church. She wanted to be around her church family. And like I said, she was one of the sweetest women you ever want to meet in your life. You ever see Miss, anybody in here ever see Miss Lily get mad about anything, get riled? One time, Miss Lily called here, and I had the unfortunate pleasure of being the one to answer the phone. I answered the phone in the kitchen, and she called. See, Miss Lily, her husband had passed away. Her health was getting bad. She wasn't able to drive to church at some point. So we had a van that was going around picking people up. The van didn't come pick her up. And she called. And I said, good morning, Gospel Light Baptist Church. It's Tom Green speaking. May I help you? Well, it's the van. <laughs> and she literally was tearing me up. I mean, she said, this lovely. I'm sorry. I'll come get you myself. I'll walk if I have to. I'll be right there. And then she said, and she said, I am so sorry. I didn't, and she apologized. I said, Ms. Lee, you don't have to apologize for wanting to be in church. Because that it. I want to be in church. She was upset, not because the band didn't run. She was upset because she wasn't getting to be here with her family. She wasn't getting to be here in God's house. Oh, to have more Miss Lilies. When's the last time you got upset and you were crying? because you didn't get to go to church. It's like we just take it for granted. We don't care that God commands it. 
We don't care how important it is to be around God's people. But the last thing is this. He gives us, we're just about out of time. <clears throat> but he says, encourage, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We want to be in church. We need to be in church. We should go to church for the encouragement that we get. Do you understand? You look around at what's going on. It says, so much the more as you see the day approaching. Look around at what's going on outside here. It's crazy out there. In the last year and a half, it seems like everything's just gone upside down. We've been hit with a virus, lockdowns, mask mandates, this, that, the other thing. And it's just like we've had riots and all these things going on. And it's like our entire country is falling apart in a matter of a year and a half. We're seeing things going on around the world in the last year and a half. It's just crazy stuff. And we go, oh no, it's horrible. And we get discouraged when we look at it. Well, you understand, these things have to pass before the Lord comes back. And the closer we get to his return, the more of this we're going to see. I said in Sunday school this morning, <laughs> those Christians that are in Afghanistan are being hunted down, even as we speak, because they're Christians. You know what's going to happen to the people that are saved during the tribulation period? They're going to be hunted down, no different than those Christians in Afghanistan, and they'll be slaughtered. See, we're getting a foretaste of things to come. And it's real easy to get discouraged when you start seeing it. It's like one disaster after a disaster after a disaster. There's a hurricane hitting in Louisiana. People are getting the vaccine. They're told to get the vaccine. Now they're here. Vaccine doesn't work against this new variant. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. You can't get a job, but there's everybody needs it. Everybody's hiring, but nobody can get a job. This is crazy stuff. Fuel prices are going crazy. Lumber prices are going crazy. And it just seems like chaos reigns. That's why we come together, because we need to come here and remind one another, exhort one another, encourage one another. God's still in control. God's still on the throne. None of this is taking God by surprise. And here's the thing. We should be saying to each other, you know what? Today could be the day. Wouldn't that be great? As a believer, if today were the day that Christ called us home, he takes us away from all this chaos. Wouldn't that be great? That's right. I don't know how much longer we have. I don't. But I do know this. The closer we get, the worse it's going to get. And so we need to encourage and exhort one another. And when we're starting to get discouraged, we lift each other up. We don't want to leave anybody behind. We don't want to have to lose anybody. Now, it doesn't mean you're losing your salvation, but you can fall by the wayside. Christians can become casualties in the warfare. That's what Satan wants. That's not what God wants. That's why he gives us a church. And there are so many more reasons. We're just out of time this morning, but <laughs> there's so many more reasons I can tell you why we should be in church. But those are three reasons today. God commands it to support in the battles and to encourage one another. We need to be in church. And we need to stop thinking of church as being optional. I'm going to wrap up with this. You get hungry, right? 
You gotta eat, right? You don't just sit there and say, no, I'm not gonna eat. I'm not gonna eat. Because if you don't eat, what happens? You die. You gotta breathe, right? If you choose not to breathe, what happens? You die. It's not optional. You gotta breathe, you gotta eat. <coughs> you know what? Jesus gave us the breath of life. The word is the bread of life. That's right. We need to be breathing, eating, drinking, everything about the word of God and being in God's house. It's just as important as breathing and eating and sleeping and anything else. And when we start making that such a priority in our lives, you know what, we'll see a difference in our country, in our lives, our families, and all around. Would you stand to your feet? Everybody standing, every head bowed. Brother Bo's going to come up, get ready to play. Jesse, lead us in some music. Brother Mike will be here at the front.